Hey. Hi, Billy. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you, Maggie. Welcome to the Citizens Bank Opera House. Well, thank you for having us. When did the Opera House actually open? So it opened in 1928, yeah. and it was called the B.F. Keith Memorial Theater. Yeah. And there was no expense spared when it was built in 1928 as a vaudeville theater. And then talkies became popular, so we became a first-run movie house in the 1930s, all the way up until Sarah Caldwell owned the building wow. in the 1980s. And then there was a renovation, what, 2003, 2004? Correct, yeah, Sarah didn't have all of the finances to keep the building up and going, so it shuttered in the 1990s, and then Clear Channel did a $52 million restoration. Well, I know you're supposed to be my official tour guide, mm -hmm. and you are. Yeah, I am. Uh, would you mind if I'm kind of the unofficial tour guide? Absolutely, take it away. Let's go. Okay. Welcome to the Grand Lobby. Everything in here was restored to its original glory back in 1928, including these columns right here. These are Carrera marble, and they're imported from Italy. The minute I walk into this area, you think, you know, when you're coming to a show here, mm -hmm. uh, this is where everybody congregates before the show and at intermission, and, you know, you always see, and it was so cool, everybody's dressed up. And, and we'll get there again. Yeah, we will, we will. You know, back in the day, in, in vaudeville days in the 1920s, people came and went at different times throughout the day. So this space was used a little differently, but now this is where everyone comes. It's just so grand and so beautiful, and you're right, restored. It's just remarkable how beautiful the columns and the marble look. It's really unbelievable. And here's Benjamin Franklin Keith. That is the Benjamin? This is him. Hey, Ben. How you doing, buddy? You know what? He still looks good, doesn't he? Not bad for his age. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the ceiling. Is there an official name for this area up here on the second level? This is the mezzanine promenade. The detail is incredible. There is over 30,000 man hours put into the exquisite detail that you see up above. And all of it is plaster work and they use very fine tools, almost like dental tools. You mean like a guy with a toothbrush or something? <laughs> uh, more like a little plaque remover, but sure, yeah. I'm guessing they didn't have flat screens back in the day though. They didn't, no. These are new um, and they help us broadcast the show live to people who are waiting in the lobbies. Wow. And now we're going to go to what you refer to as the smoker. I'm guessing we're not smoking meat there. It's... Not, not today. <laughs> no, All right, let's no. go to the smoker. <laughs> this is the men's smoker lounge. This is yes. This is where the men would gather before performance or during intermission. Uh, only men were allowed in here. Of course. Boy, it's amazing how long they got away with that. Uh, huh? It absolutely and is. And I'm guessing there was a giant fire going and. Back in the day, yeah. This was really where the men would gather and around the corner we have our stairs that go nowhere. You have stairs that go nowhere? Have you heard about them? The famous stairs that go nowhere. Let's go there. Okay, I'm going up these stairs and then what happens back then? Well, the Keith Vaudeville circuit had really refined vaudeville on stage for families and men and women to enjoy. Uh, but these stairs used to go next door to a different theater that had more uh, burlesque theater going on it. And was that for men only as well as the, oh, it I was. get it. <laughs> so you stop in the smoker's lounge, you have yourself a brandy and a cigar, and then let's go to the burlesque up the stairs. That's most wow. likely what happened. Fascinating. Hello? You in there? <laughs> <laughs> this is, or this was, the women's lounge. Uh, yes. Any standout differences between the men's smoker lounge and what was the women's lounge then? I'd say there are more mirrors in this room. Clearly, yeah. yeah. This is where the women would conjugate uh, in between intermissions or performances. And if you wanted to get in touch with your husband in the men's smoker room, you had to pass a note to the porter. You are kidding. No. They literally were not allowed to walk in to the men's lounge. They had Correct. to pass a note. Yeah, different times, but true. Wow. Now, did the women also have a stair staircase to nowhere? No, they had a nursery <laughs> around the corner. Not quite as fun. <laughs> Maggie, I didn't know the lighting booth was on the tour. Uh, uh, yeah. How far up are we going here? Uh, so we're going up probably about two stories, and we're going to take a look at the original lighting booth from 1928. 1928, and the booth is still active? Yes, 
Yep. Well, that's what I call a good electrician. Yeah. Let's go up. I'm thinking if I'm a light booth guy, I'm not going to have a drink before work. Yeah, that, Just saying. That would be. Holy moly. So this is, oh my God. Yep. Oh, look at this. These are all murals from past shows of the light operators who are up here during each performance. So these light fixtures have worked all of the world famous shows that everybody reads about. Yes, these are, yeah, these are part of the modern amenities that we did in the stage house when we did the restoration in 2004. So in some ways, these lights are celebrities. Yeah, I'm just that's saying. That's a great way of looking at it. Can I turn it on? Go or for it. Is that it. a violation of union rules? Well, or we'll let you do it this one time. Okay. That button Don't right show there. this to the union. <laughs> okay, I just hit a button. Yep. Oh, there it is. I got it now. <laughs> So right about now, Maggie, the <laughs> stage manager would be shouting at me, you're on the wrong person. I noticed a lot of Nutcracker artwork, and isn't there a connection between one of the crew members and his daughter? Yeah, so when the Boston Ballet is in, one of the light operator's daughter come in at the end of the performance, and she does all of the art. So on a typical show, what's the ratio like, number of cast members versus number of crew? It's a great question. So we have, typically we stay for every one person you see on stage, it takes about three people backstage to make that happen. Sounds so, like an average day on dining table. Yeah. I'm just saying, that, and that's <laughs> just for me. Uh, where do we want to go now? Uh, let's take a look at the stage. Okay. Okay, so now we're in-house yes. and uh, we're ready for a big show. Let's say you personally, we're coming to a show. Which seats would you sit in? I love these seats up here. They give you a full view of that theater and a great view of the set on stage. Under normal circumstances, Citizens Bank Opera House would welcome, I think, up to like a half million people in the course of a year. Correct. And I know originally there were 3,000 seats, and at one point it was reduced to more like 2,600 seats. Why was that? Yeah. Well, we reduced the capacity uh, in order to make the seats a little bit more comfortable. Can we talk about the ceiling? Yes. I mean, how many different stories go into this detail? So these murals were done by a muralist in the early 1900s who's pretty famous. His name was R. Ardenti. So all of these murals are oil on canvas, and then they were applied to the ceiling. I'm um, guessing the folks that worked the ceiling really didn't have a problem with height. I would say oh. so. It's several stories up, so you can't have a fear of heights. So Maggie, typically would these be considered the most expensive seats in the house? No, they are not actually. Oh. Yeah, contrary to popular belief, we actually referred to these as the politician seats. That's what they used to be referred to as. So they could be seen rather than see. Correct. So yeah. they, yeah, so everybody in the house can look down and say, Oh, honey, there they are. Right. The royals have just arrived kind of a thing. Yeah, as the industry evolved, more content took place on the far wings of the stage. So. Mm -hmm. In terms of cost, typically, mm -hmm. where would these seats stand in terms of price? Uh, these would be around the least expensive end of the... Of the really? Day. Yeah. God, when's the next show? I want to <laughs> buy these. One of my favorite parts, my personal favorite mm -hmm. parts of any show is I tend to be focused on the orchestra mm -hmm. and here we are now at the orchestra pit and it's interesting because if you're here for a show you hear the magic mm -hmm. but most of us at a show wouldn't see the magic. If you're here for a Boston Ballet performance, we could have up to 50 musicians in this orchestra. Pit. 50 musicians in yeah. here? Wow. Yeah. If you're here for a Broadway show, you're going to see closer to 12 to 15 musicians in the pit. How do all members of the orchestra manage to see the show while they're performing? They are able to see the conductor, and the conductor has a live feed of the performance. Uh -huh. All right, so from front of house, can we go back of house now? Let's go take a look. All right. How many dressing rooms, Maggie, here? We have two star dressing rooms, and then we have probably, I want to say six or seven ensemble dressing rooms. Ah, now but when you say ensemble, does that mean they have to share a dressing yes, room? Yes, yeah. yeah. And it's mostly just for costume changes, and then makeup, yep. and... Makeup, and... Uh, but the star, for instance, uh, Dolly Parton would be here, right? She would be, yeah. Tony Bennett would be here. Yep. One of the great stories of the backstage area here at Citizens Bank Opera House are the murals. 
It's a really big part of the history. Can we see some of those? Yeah, let's go check them out. So let's take a look over here. This is Hamilton. Oh yeah. And then over here, we have Dear Evan Hansen, which is another first national tour, big hit. And sold out well in advance, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Here we have Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Very recent, 2019, yeah. why was she here? Yeah, so her and Bill were on a speaking tour. Phantom <laughs> of the Opera, and again, the entire cast, right? Signs right all of these there, murals. Yeah. This is like the Hall of Superstars. Yep. And you have the union numbers, their position, wow. and what they play. So here we have Kinky Boots. Oh boy. And Newsies. Wow. Look at that, huh? Mm -hmm. So that was in 2010? Mm -hmm. Hillary and... So Maggie, I feel like I'm standing on sacred ground, the actual mm. stage here at the Citizens Bank uh, Opera House. The second I walk in, you look up and all of these amazing racks, are these the contraptions that drop all the beautiful backdrops in a show? Yeah, so these are called lines and these hold the backdrops that come in, fly in and out of the show. And we have 82 here. And how are they operated during the course of a show? We have people in our stagehand department who are called the flymen. They go up there and they will get cues from the stage manager as to what proper drape comes in next. We go up about eight stories here, so something to keep in mind. So we need to be able to pull the entire setup. Can you show me the ghost light? Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look. Okay. So every theater has a ghost light. This piece of the light is given to us by the Colonial Theater when we opened. Is that tradition or something? Or? It is, it is. When a new theater opens, a piece of an old theater uh, gets put into the ghost lamp so that there's kind of the spirit that's passed on. Okay, but what is the actual function of the ghost light? Yeah, so it depends upon um, what you want to believe. I mean, most people believe that the ghost lamp, you turn it on and it gives the ghosts who are performing in the theater, who live in the theater, the ability to see their audience. Oh, I'm going to go with that story. <laughs> you can't have a better story than that. Yeah. Really? Well, Hello, ghosts! Yeah. We're here! Logistically, it also keeps people from um, perhaps falling into the pit during when the theater is dark. So that's what we also keep yeah. it on Yeah, so for. this is constantly <laughs> on. It is when the theater is dark. Maggie, thank you so much. Thank you. The show must go on. It really must. Yeah. And you want to take a bow? Let's do it. Yeah.